Hey guys, Marcus here. It's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound. What do you do when your front ensemble is trash? All right, <laughs> so let's talk about it some, right? A few things that'll make some front ensembles not so great when it comes to performing in a very specific um, outdoor environment. Thing number one is gonna go back to one of the things I had to say about the, the drum line in general, which is clarity. Can you play a similar part or can your part line up with the pieces that it's supposed to in the times that it's supposed to? So one of the things I like to do is um, play with mallets that are a little bit too articulate, right? So mallets that even sound harsh. And what I'll do is I'll start playing nice and piano with mallets that are just too hard for the part, slow it down, put it on the mitt. And the reason I do that is I wanna hear the exact contact of the bar. I wanna hear that little click, that articulation, and I wanna have one person play it first and then add on the next person, add on the next person, constantly giving ourselves information about the smoothness of our hands, the evenness of our sound. And then after that point, go ahead and raise the heights to whatever the, the show dynamic entails, and then go back through and then systematically start to change the players that added on last to softer mallets. And then the very last person that switches to the softer mallets is gonna be your listening point, whoever that is for you. Um, and then hopefully you'll have a, a, a different way that you're thinking about the attack sound actually approaching the board. Another thing that, that'll kind of step up your front ensemble game is just always understanding what's happening in the ensemble. Now, for the most part, there's only really one or two people, sometimes three, just depending on the section of the music, that absolutely has to understand at all times where the, the percussion, where the drum line is going with their parts. And sometimes they have to understand where maybe the ostinato is in the low brass or maybe where the melody is in the trumpets or something like that so that they can relate their part to the, to the sound that's happening behind them. Now, this is crazy important. The more people you have in your ensemble that understand their listening responsibility is maybe to their person, directly to their right or their left, but then they also know the decisions that those people are having to make when it comes to lining up the ensemble front to back. The more people you have that can understand that, the more sort of cohesive um, the front ensemble will be. If you have only one person who knows what's going on and everybody is following that one person, um, you're gonna find a lot of times that that person's gonna have to struggle to push and pull the rest of their people in and out of time and, and things of that particular nature. So the more people who understand the musical context of what's going on, the more people who understand what their center sort of person is, um, is listening for, what their center person is watching for as far as the hands and how they relate that to the sound that's happening behind them, the better you're gonna have as far as balancing the ensemble from a vertical um, timeline kind of standpoint. Thing number three when it comes to your fun ensemble is going to be skill sets. Now, there are plenty of groups out there who do totally fine with playing the melody, maybe playing some crash cymbals, having some cute little parts kind of in the background. But one of the things that's really gonna make your groove stand apart is your ability to play ornamentations. So things like permutations, dealing with four mallets um, to um, have different, uh, different rhythms based off of a chord, maybe having different parts happening in one hand and then parts of the melody happening in another hand. These things are gonna kind of up your game when it comes to what you're able to offer the ensemble and then what you're able to offer the listener uh, from, a, from a general standpoint. Even when it comes to two mallets, are you able to add these kind of, um, these sort of woodwind type runs, these 16th notes, 32nd notes, and are you able to play those things with beautiful, what I call snare drum <laughs> rhythmic accuracy when you actually do that. Hopefully that gives you guys some things to think about, just three little tips that can make your front ensemble better. Once again, it's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound, and I'll see you guys in the next video.